Rub up your engines! Okay, the most important thing that you have to choose when you buy a vehicle is the engine. And most people don't know squat about engines, so I'm going to explain all the different engines that are out there so you can make a wise decision. Now, both of these engines have inline four-cylinder engines, so we'll open hoods and explain them. They open rather differently. There we go. Now, this Toyota Matrix has a typical Toyota Corolla engine. It's a 1.8 liter inline four with intelligent variable valve timing we're talking about phenomenal gas mileage for an old car this car is now 17 years old gets 37 miles a gallon on the highway if you're driving 60 miles an hour and 17 years old doesn't burn any oil runs like a clock it's got plenty enough horsepower now power mad people say that's not enough power oh they're so slow no they aren't you can cruise all day at 85 if you want these things they run perfectly fine and as you can see as we look inside the tachometer it starts to redline 6400 rpm so you get a combo of good gas mileage it's zippy enough it's gonna last forever now we'll compare this to the slingshot which granted it's a toy now it's got 70 more horsepower in a 2 liter engine instead of 1.8 but it's a high revving insane motor it gets theoretically 203 horsepower at the crank but it does it like 8250 rpm which as you can see on a tachometer that's pretty much the red line <laughs> you're not supposed to go much faster than that right so this thing's got to spin like mad to get that horsepower and even though this little bitty three-wheeler has fiberglass and it's cool looking, but it doesn't have a top four doors and air conditioning like the Matrix, it's over twice the fuel economy that that thing gets. Even though the Matrix is an automatic, and this is a manual transmission. This engine is basically a toy made for speed for going around, mainly at lower speeds. Lower speeds, oh, you can get 20 miles a gallon or something, but at high speeds, it just starts sucking that gas down. Now, being a toy, this Polaris, and they make their own engine, you can see it's pretty old school it's got normal fuel injectors it's not gdi it doesn't have turbo or anything on it it's made to put out as much horsepower as it can even though they're super high rpm so obviously the engine will wear out faster and it gets really horrible gas mileage compared to the toyota considering the toyota weighs a bunch more these are just toys this is something that you know you're not gonna be driving cross country in this thing taking the family it's only got two seats right no trunk for luggage or anything but this shows the difference that they're both inline four cylinder engines but the Polaris is a high revving one to get horsepower where the Matrix is just a normal 1.8 liter common Toyota Corolla engine that can run and run 1.8 in my Celica 1.8 in this Toyota makes extremely reliable 1.8 liter engines now recently there's a trend for making engines even smaller 1.5 1.3 even some 1.0 and they put turbochargers on them you got to understand if you're going to buy a turbocharged car the engine is not going to last as long turbocharger rams a bunch of air and that increases the compression your engine just will wear out faster and strangely enough the reason they go to turbocharged engine is because on paper for the epa they get in quotes better gas miles but that's on some stupid machine testing real humans driving turbocharged cars have a tendency of stepping on the gas more because the more you step in the gas the turbo kicks in more you get more acceleration then you get worse gas mileage so in the real world unless you drive like a granny who goes to church and goes to the grocery store and doesn't go over 30 miles an hour you're actually going to get worse gas mileage in a turbo if you drive it higher than you are in a conventional non-turbo so not only will you get worse gas mileage but the engine will wear out faster buying a honda my advice is I would buy the two liter non turbocharged Honda four cylinder engine versus the 1.5 liter turbo. The 1.5 liter turbo is faster, but you're going to get worse gas mods. The engine isn't going to last as long. There's no magic pill that you can have the fastest car that gets phenomenal gas mods. It doesn't work that way. My son's got two Toyota Tacomas. He's got an older four cylinder one and a brand new V6 TRD. Why did he buy a new one? 
Well, because he got a boat. It's a heavy boat. He wants to tow the boat. He wanted something to take out in the country, put his boat in. Now, in that case, you'd probably be better off getting the Toyota V6 engine. It actually gets better gas mileage than the four-cylinder engine because of Toyota's new trick technology and their new engine system so that the V6 actually gets better gas mileage than the four-cylinder for that year. Strange but true, of course. That's if you drive at normal speed. You're going 60, 70 on the highway, right? You start pushing it, you're going to get worse gas mileage mileage ride. You pull a lot of weight, you're going to get worse gas mileage. He pulls the big boat, he gets worse gas mileage. That's just how anything goes if you're pulling weight. If you saw the video I made a few months ago, a guy had a Honda Civic with a CVT transmission. He towed a U-Haul from California to Rhode Island with his crap in it, right? And I said, did you have any problems? He says, no, no. So you check it with the machine. I got my machine. There was no problems with the transmission or anything. I said, what kind of gas miles did you get? He said, well, it went down to 15 miles a gallon when I was pulling this trailer. Well, a little Civic getting 15 miles a gallon is terrible if it hadn't been pulling the trailer. He'd always get 30 something miles a gallon normally. You pull weight, you're gonna get worse gas miles. It doesn't matter what engine you're using. Although if you buy a diesel engine truck, the towing doesn't knock it down as much until you get to really heavy duty weights. If you're pulling a boat or something like that, it won't knock much off on a big diesel engine, but big diesel engines are expensive. Diesel fuel's expensive. You're not really saving anything in the long run when you pay that much money for a vehicle you pay that kind of money you pay 80 90 grand or something for big old diesel you're not going to care that much about gas mileage you want to pull big things and you know you're pulling them and it's going to make it there that's the main thing that diesels are good for they're great for pulling that's why all the big 18 wheelers have diesel engines in them. let's say you're going to buy a car even if you're going to buy a used car go to the dealer check out some of the new ones check out a honda with a two liter four cylinder engine right drive it and then check out the same one with a 1.5 turbo. See if you're happy with either of them. Many people get in the two liter and they say it's a Honda, it's smooth, gets good gas mileage, I like it. Other people say it's too slow, it's too doggy, I want the turbo. And I had a guy with the two liter non-turbo, he was totally happy, he says, I don't care. But I had another customer about the Accord 1.5 turbo because he said, I road tested the two liter, I didn't like it. Now, it's a Honda, it's not like it's a piece of crap like some Fiat junk that maybe the engine will blow up at 40,000 miles. They're still gonna go a long time, but they will wear out faster than a conventional engine. Just like if you drive the slingshot hard, this engine's gonna wear out a lot faster than a Toyota engine will because it's revving so much higher. You're getting full horsepower, this thing is driving at 8,000 RPM. When I'm driving the Matrix on a highway at 65 miles an hour, hey, maybe the thing's going 2,300 RPM. Look at the difference, 8,000, 2,300. 8,000 is going to wear out faster and use a heck of a lot more fuel. Now, no matter what engine you buy, don't listen to any of the horse manure that companies tell you. Oh, you can have extended oil changes. Let me tell you, modern engines have so much pressure. They use such a lightweight oil. You want to change that oil and filter every 5,000 miles if you do normal city stop and go combo highway, if you want it to last. Do not believe that, oh, you can go extended oil changes. Yeah, then the cars burn oil when they get old. I've had so many customers bring me GM vehicles, they're burning oil. When they're three, four years old, they got 80 to 100,000 miles on them. They take it to the dealer, they say, well, that's normal, they all do that. Well, yes, it is normal when you don't change the oil, right? The pistons get worn, the oil's dirty. Dirt is what? Friction, and it wears out the piston rings and the bore of the engine cylinder. That's what's gonna happen. You gotta take care of it regardless of what type of engine you're buying. And engines these days aren't like in the olden days. Ford went to their mass-produced V8 because it put out a lot of torque, not too much horsepower, but a lot of torque for acceleration, and it was smooth, smooth running V8, right? But things have changed a long time since then. These four-cylinder engines are smooth as can be. They know how to design them. The metallurgy's better. The computers that run the fuel injection system and the ignition systems are better. They're more efficient. You no longer need a V8 or a V6 to get a smooth running engine. If you're like me and want a long life, okay, an inline four-cylinder engine, four spark plugs, cams, all in here. If it's a V engine, you'd have this side and then the same thing on the other side. I mean, a lot of people, well, I want a big engine. I'm going to pull stuff. I'm going to do, and if you don't, you're throwing your money away. Plus, if you really need it, rent a truck. There's many places that rent trucks. That's what I do. If I got a big deal and I need something in Rhode Island, I will rent a truck, right? In Tennessee, I don't care. My son's got trucks coming out of his ears. My grandson, I just borrow one of their trucks, right? If you're not going to use them for that purpose, there's no reason in getting a big engine. It's going to get worse gas mileage. 
that's going to cost more money to fix when it breaks down. You don't need all the extra cylinders that you used to need. After all, cars are transportation devices when it comes down to it. Okay, this isn't. This is a toy. People drive them around, have fun. You can't really take them in the rain. Got a canvas top thing, but it's not going to keep you from getting wet. Seats are practically made out of scuba diving wetsuits because it's in the rain all the time and they dry off fast. But this isn't something that people are driving every day. You get an everyday car, you want something that lasts, has enough power, gets good gas mileage, it's going to last as long as it possibly can. So in this case, the smaller the better. Unless you want power. Then, smaller is not better. You get a 1.3 liter engine, put a turbocharger, GDI, it'll go to put a lot of horsepower. But it will also blow a lot faster than one of these older ones will because it's got too much high pressure technology that it is going to wear out. It's like burning a candle on both ends. The candle isn't going to last as long. You want to get better gas mileage, go out and buy a hybrid car. Now, of course, they have their own problems, extremely high level of complexity. But let's say you buy a brand new Toyota Prius. That thing's going to last probably a couple hundred thousand miles or more before anything major goes wrong with the thing. They're pretty well made. But when it does go wrong, whew, I do not advise buying a used Prius with 200,000 miles unless you get it for 500 bucks and it works. And then you say, oh, it's all gravy. As long as it lasts, I have some fun. If you do want to save on that, you can if you understand. You buy new, you get a certain amount, and that's going to cost so much money, they become more or less disposable cars. There's some old thing like this 07 Matrix with the 1.8 Corolla engine in it. Generally, they last forever unless you live up north and the bodies rust away eventually from the salt. Or, as it often happens here on the East Coast, people bring me cars and say, oh, why'd you buy a new car? They said, oh, we loved our old Corolla, but we got T-boned. We got rear-ended by these maniac drivers in Massachusetts. Realize, in many cases, Simpler is indeed better if it's made correctly. Because let's face the fact, most vehicles you're buying aren't a toy like this Polaris. They're serious transportation. You want to last, get good gas mileage, not fall apart on you. And the big thing behind your vehicle is the motor. So now that you know a little bit more about motors, you can make a wise decision. And if you've got any questions about certain ones, hey, just ask me, I'll answer them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.